So we're going to go to the word. Power of the church. I believe in the end time, the answer of the end time is in the church. What church? It's you. You are the reason why Jesus came and crucified on the cross for our sin. Jesus never came here with a miracle and raised the dead and, and do all these crazy, crazy things. People try to question him. He came here only one reason, uh, so he can save us uh, from this world of from sin. Uh, so he shared his blood uh, for the church. Somebody say amen. And if you don't understand the power of God uh, is in you, uh, the devil is going to have you uh, go out of the place. Your mind starts thinking uh, about the thing is already under the blood. Uh, the thing is already crucified on it. The thing is already forgiven. Uh, somebody Somebody say amen. Uh, when you ask in Jesus to forgive, it's already done. What are you talking about? I'm excited. Because there's a power is inside of me. Hmm. The devil should have me when I was in the world. But I make up my mind when I come to Jesus. Devil, you going to be run. And you're going to hear my voice to rebuke you and take authority all over you. Because we know there is a power. It's inside of me. Somebody say amen. And sometimes not the devil fight you. But you fight yourself and your mind and the thing. You believe in it. The reason why you're not experiencing. The power of God is inside of you. Someone say amen. Let me read a scripture before you criticize me tonight. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or thinking according to the power that worketh in us. Power, what power? See, speaking in tongue is not, never make me excited if I see people speaking in tongue. Pastor was here tonight. I don't want to see people have some fruit in your life. Because when somebody's hungry, it's not hungry what you do, what you say. It's hungry what you you have. And somebody say amen. I want somebody to come around and they look at you. What is going on with that brother? What's going on with that sister? There is a power. It's in you. Somebody say amen. When you go to the restaurant, people's going to watch you. When you go to work, people's going to watch you. Because there's something different about the church. It's the power of God. It's inside us. Somebody say amen. Verse 21, and to him be glory in the church. Glory. Be famous. Somebody say amen. We gotta be famous. The glory of God is only come on us. Pastor is already said righteousness. Praise God. Leave your life changed. You can't just come to church and you think you're righteous. And when you leave the church, you live different out there or whatever is going on. Whatever you leave here should be taken with you out there. Show the world what kind of person you are. But they're going to recognize uh, the power is inside of you. Somebody say amen. The reason why a lot of church go in the sideways because they don't preach the truth. Somebody say amen. I don't want to compromise what I have. I forsaken thing on my family, the thing I love to do in the world, because I found the truth. There is only one God. Beside him, there is no other God. There is only one name to be baptized. It's in the name of Jesus. There is only one way you're going to live for God. Live separate life. That testified it. Verse 21, and to be he, be him be a glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all age. Somebody say amen. If you're old, well, thanks God you're old. If you're young, thanks God you're young. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Without 
and. Somebody say amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. I love this. Power of the church. I'm going to go in a minute to explain you what I'm talking about. Do you know what church means? Separated. That's what church is. Separate yourself from the world. So you can come in and reign in with Christ. Christ means anointing. That means God's already sacrificed himself for us. So when you come into the world, you got to learn how to get the word out. You got to learn how to get the world understand we are different. We should be talk different. We should be walk different. We should be have our attitude different. We should be have our mind made up different. Somebody say amen. We should be dressed different. Somebody say amen. Dress code in the church is not it's not a man's standard. It's the word. It's doctrine. Standard is different than the holiness. Somebody say amen. We let the pastor deal with that, but but I'm going to try to help you out how to live holy and live according to the standard of the church. Can I help you out tonight? You really don't need to go to the word of God to live holy and need to live in the standard. You know what you got to do? Just watch your pastor, watch his wife, how they live for God. Paul say, follow me as I follow Christ. So if you see your pastor and the first lady, the way they handle themselves, the way they, that is the way you, I'm not asking you to wear the night like a suit here. But I ask you to how you dress yourself in the kingdom of God, in the church. Somebody say amen. I wear all these suits. People think I have all the money. No, I go to yard sale. I go to Salvation Army. Somebody say amen. And I say, God, give me something. It's lower than $10. What my budget is in. And I go over. But when I come, people think, man, that guy is true. No, I go to a place that fit my budget. Not place my mind wonder. Do I have $300? No. Somebody say amen. So, man, I don't know why I go sideways. I wanna, if you want to leave holy, leave in a good standard, just watch your pastor and a first lady. How do they, how do they handle themselves in the church? That's the best way you learn the standard and the holiness of the church. Because when you go to the scripture, you're going to be confused and you're going to be going to the internet. Oh, yeah. But if you're watching your pastor and his wife, should be put some challenge in you. I'm going to dress better than he is. But make sure I'm holy. Make sure I have a good standard. Put some challenge in you about standing the holiness because you please God. Somebody say Amen. It's really the power is in the church. Somebody say amen. And how the power coming in the church, I'm going to give you some really simple thing I always apply in my life. Somebody say amen. It work. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. And, he, and I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. So when you have the power of God inside of you, the gates of hell should not prevail against you. Because you are the church. You are the one Jesus talked about it. Upon this rock, I build my church. I have a church by myself. I don't need no praise team to help me. I don't want to know everybody. No, I have church by myself. I preach to myself. I sing it to myself. I walk to myself. I go in the church. There's a young man was working with me today and he looked at me. What kind of language you speak? and say, you don't understand. It's the Holy Ghost. Because I pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. I'm not ashamed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the way I live here. This is the way I live out there. Somebody say amen. We need to let the devil know there is a power is inside of you. Somebody say amen. 
I got 10 more minutes and I'm done. <laughs> Woo! Someone say, man, there is a power in the church, but this is something that's going to help you tonight. If you desire to have the power inside of you, first thing you got to learn, you got to learn to isolate yourself from the thing of this world. Not only the thing of this world, here's another thing you're going to be really disagree with. Your past. Let your past go. It's not going to, it's not going to help you out every time something going on. Your past, remind you, you're no good for nothing. Tell the past is over. I'm a new person. I'm a new Christ. Jesus is leaving me. Oh, my past, remind me as a landmark. But I'm going forward because there's a power of God is inside of me. Only thing it become a testimony to glorify God. Yeah. Not me. Not you. The only way your past come is gonna be turned as a testimony to remind you where you've been. Somebody say amen. How God take you out from the world uh, and spin you around uh, and put himself inside of you. Somebody say amen. In the Psalm 29 verse 11, the Lord will give his strength uh, unto his people. The Lord will bless uh, his people with peace. Do you understand what peace means? Simple. Hold it. What? We did. Hold it. It's the only Holy Ghost Inside of you, it's going to keep you peace in your mind. And if you're not believing me, try this. If you go and fight hell, fight the devil all day long, lay in your bed and start speaking in time, you will fall asleep. You not remember what's going on in all day. You speak in your tongue because the Holy Ghost, he want to give you peace. The Bible says in the book of Romans, it's our intercessor. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And when I go to bed, I say, Holy Ghost, we have a good time today. Please don't wake me up. Because I got to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. But if you want to wake me up, wake me up because somebody needs my prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the deal. <laughs> and he wake me up. Somebody say amen. <laughs> like this morning, I was got up because I have a job start at 4.30 this morning. I got up and say, Holy Ghost, what's next? I need you more than the coffee because the coffee will start coming into my, my mind. I to stop and get some coffee to get me wake up. But the Holy Ghost kicking in, Pastor, and a peace coming in my mind. We're not thinking about coffee anymore, but I think about the Word of God. Pastor, I say, God bless my pastor. Bless the first family, bless my elder, bless the church, and I start praying, and a peace coming in. So the coffee is bye bye. I saved two dollars seventy five cents for ice coffee. Somebody say amen, because the peace of the Holy Ghost is coming inside of me. Somebody say amen. Church, if you want to see this thing move forward, we need to exercise the power of God is inside of you. Nobody stop you. Nobody hold you up. You gotta rise. Rise up and believe there's a power is inside of you. Oh, I got four more minutes left. Oh, I'm almost done. You got to separate yourself from the thing of the world. This thing, I don't get it, Pastor. You already know the answer and you still point about the thing. God already gave you the answer. It's not ignorant. He already know what you want. You the one who's changed your mind. God don't change his mind. He don't lie. He will not forsake in you. He's always there waiting for you. But you got to understand there is a power of him. It's inside of you. Coming from somewhere. Somebody close in my heart. Something happened to them. Soften my heart. Live in my heart. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. I want to know everything about it. Before it happened to me, God will help you. Are you an apostolate? That's 
It seems like we are apostolic, but we come over here, we are Baptists. No, no, I'm, I'm telling you. You come over here, you act like, what's going on with you? This is the apostolic church. Hell, when I hear this church, they're placing their God, they're singing the power inside of them. Don't hold back. God gave you the power to endure for everything coming your way. Get this in our heart. But the challenge is facing the church, pastor, this church, we have a hard time. To let go of the world, we're still holding on. Let go of our past, still holding on. The thing I already share, your tears. Somebody asked me today, you have to cry what happened in you and your wife? No, it's all. He already got that. It's already closed chapter. Only thing I cry for is my little boy. Amen. Someone say, man. We need to draw some, some line where we're walking on it because God what the church to be used is in the time. Somebody say, man, I believe, the pastor believe, this church is going to be packed up. What is his principle? Church. Teach Bible study. Witness. Have a prayer meeting. When is the last time you have a prayer meeting by yourself at your home? Come on. Yeah. What is the last time you have a prayer meeting in your car at the parking lot? Rather than be on a phone try to blow your mind over the, all the things of the world. I'm talking about the power of God is inside of you. Somebody say amen. We need to rise up and act like we have the power of God inside us. There are people in the church. There are people coming to church. They need the church to have the manifestation and the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. You know why I prayed up every day? You know why I want to in tune with God every day? Because my pastor down on me. My elder, my church, my son, there are people in my family, they can down on my prayer. I don't have no time to think about the world. I've been telling you, I always confess this. Every Sunday morning, I pray through before I get to church because I drive this golf course. And, whoa, I can make excuses and go play golf on Sunday and let the pastor know where I'm at. I'm telling you, there's something in the world we got to sacrifice. We got to cut it out because God is fixing the use of the church in the end time. Don't ever worry about the politicians. They come up with this idea. They want to pay the debt of people make debt. If you go ahead the debt, you got to pay for it. Somebody say amen. Is it God good? I got three more minutes. I'm counting down. Acts 1, 7, 7, 8. And he say unto them, it is not for you to know the time or a season. There we go. Sometimes God told me, Son, if you want me to be use you, if you want me to be in you, shut your mouth. I did. I did. I shut my mouth and listen. Sometimes when I'm quiet, I'm listening. Okay, God, what's going on? <laughs> See, sometimes God cannot talk to you when your mouth is out over the place, running out over the place, because everything come out of your mouth. It's not glorified God. Somebody say, it's not you to know the time and the season. Is it time everything? Somebody say, amen. But we shall receive power. I love that power. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody say, amen. 
When that power rise up, I cannot wait. Yes, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, I will do it. Yes, Pastor. What do you have? What do you want me to do? I'm ready for I'm ready to go forward. Because sometimes the reason why we not answer the man of God or somebody's over up because we still not kill the flesh out of us. Somebody say amen. If we're not going to submit to God, submit to a man of God, submit to your elder, submit to somebody, you're never going to go nowhere. You can listen to your favorite preacher. I hope the pastor is your favorite preacher. Because if you come to me and you say you have a favorite, I will repeat you. I do. The pastor should be your favorite preacher in your life. Somebody say amen. It's because those people have a sound word. Talk so prophetic. Sound so good. They understand where I'm at. No, they don't. You did. If you talk to him, to, to him, somebody say amen. And after they so sweet talk to you, please give me five dollars. Mail to this address. We take your love offering. And some of us will fall on that. And we have a parking lot I need to pay for. We have a work you need to be done. Your center friend know how to manipulate you. Oh. I'm going to try to get them. I owe 10, $10 or 100 They know how to put the money out of you because you're center friend. Wait a minute. You are so seed in a crown. It's not blessed. Come on, brother. You want me to tell you something? You want me to tell you something tonight? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm excited. Somebody said, I want the devil to know this church. This pastor, the first lady, you are, we're marching forward. We're going to feel this thing. We're going forward. I don't care what they say. I already make up my mind before I come to the Lord. I already know what God wants me to do. But what about you? I already experienced the power of the Holy Ghost. I already know what God wanted to do. Somebody say amen. Church, we move forward. We march. And somebody say amen. So separate yourself from the world. Cut it. If you don't know how to cut it, have a Piper study with the past. Because when you come to me, I look at you and say, just make up your mind. Walk away. Why are you spending all your mind to think about something? It's not belonging to you. It's not belonging to God. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm a stubborn man when it comes to a thing of God. Ain't nobody's going to move me when I make my mind up what belongs to God. Honey, separate it. The power of God is in the church. Number two, you ready for number two? Sacrifice. How many times you come in the church, you feel like your body's out of the place, like dragging you down? You should sacrifice. If the pastor preach, that's going to give you about two and a half hours to be here. And you go home and be happy. Sacrifice two hours and a half until the man of God is finished. Don't, don't try to use the restroom to make a sign. Hey, pastor, can you stop? I'm going to the bathroom. I'm going out there. Make all these kind of excuses. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Somebody say amen. If you have a sacrifice burning inside of you, uh, it's not matter how long the service is. Uh, everything you live in at home, uh, you're going to get home and they're still there. Somebody say amen. Because if you in God's will, God will send an angel to protect it for you. I, I know. When I see, how many of you go like this? Oh. I work tomorrow. I'm going to school. Can, can you hurry up? I'm talking about sacrifice. One thing God hate the most when I find out, he don't like people make excuse about him. Because when you wake up, there's an air waiting for you. When you're asking for strength, it's waiting for you. 
Somebody say, Amen. He'll provide for you. Sacrifice. The power of God is inside of you. I was honest to the pastor about this project going on. I was not pleased with a lot of things going on because the way I look at things, this is God's money and my pastor is involved with everything up and I want the company and the people to understand. Well, I'm going to straight with you. Black and white the way I see things. This is what your word is. We hold you accountable for your word. But don't come back and try to tell us something different because your word it matters. Somebody say amen. And I'm here to tell you, but you know, I never lost a sleep. Somebody say amen. I'm exciting. Bless the company, bless their family. And the pastor's phone being blown out because they're calling him. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. But he sacrificed his time. He sacrificed everything for the work of God. How many of you want the power of God inside of you? You gotta learn how to sacrifice something that's not belonging to you. It belong to God. Somebody say amen. If you want the power of God inside of you, you got to learn how to sacrifice. Step away from the world. Sacrifice. Number three. I love the number three. I pray through this. Number three, you got to spend some time with God. From 24 hours of your time and asking him, what is your plan for you? How are you going to line out with the man of God? Talk to him like you talk to your parents. Somebody say amen. amen. Talk to him like you talk to your kids. Somebody say amen. Sacrifice. Somebody say amen. Separate from the thing of the world. There's nothing out there. When you come here, all these things, you worry about it. You not sleep over it. It's not going to remind you when you face yeah. that. Come on. Come on. It's over. Yeah. Why do you start living for God? <laughs> Somebody say, man. Yeah. Are you ready to use the power of God? It's inside of you. I have a lot of testimony every day. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like, whoa, this is pretty good. Is that what God wants us when we have the power? We come here with the testimony, not complain, not bad attitude. Because your boss blow in your ears before you come to church, bless him. Learn how to bless them. Somebody say, man, the power of God is inside of you. But hear me out just tonight. This church is going forward. You know what I know? Because this man made up his mind. Pastor, did anybody tell you, why you always talk about God? Why you always say thing about God? Do you have a normal life to say, hey, how's everything going? Are we going to take a little vacation? What do you like to do? You want to buy a Harley Davis? He make up his mind. No, we're going to teach Bible study. We, he want to see you to be used by God. He want to see uh, um, Jacob to be up there preaching. He want to see this young girl singing. They want to see you a uh, witness to everybody. He want to see you uh, to be used by God. Forget the world. When you're spending your time to figure out the world, the world want to have you. Uh, but you have an opportunity to be in the house of God to exercise the powers inside of you. Now the last one and I'm done. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, we, we are so blessed on a Monday night. Aaron and Jacob and, and Brother Kristen. See, the devil always paying you, oh, you can't sing. Yeah, you can. Because the pastor already say. The good thing about God, if you out of note, he accepting you. Somebody say amen. But they're doing a good job on Monday. Somebody say amen. they singing the worship God. <laughs> oh, somebody say amen. Because they love God. Somebody say praise the Lord. One more scripture. I'm going to read it to you and I'm close it. Oh, we're going to have a good time.
Tell me, there are some people in here. I've been battled this before I come to church, Pastor. You've been facing some sickness in your body. And I hate that feeling. I hate it. Because I know in my heart, we have the biggest God in our life. I hate the feeling when I feel about people, they're going through things in life. You got to cut it out. It's not going to do you any good. Sometimes that can control you. They give you a lot of time to control a thing, but you messed it up. I messed it up. And he said, it's over. Let me control you. And you know what? <laughs> Save me a lot of headaches. Psalm 37, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Somebody say no. Some people, they backslide because their favorite meal, they get a need of whatever drink they have. Somebody say amen. Dwell in the land. Shall dwell in the land. And valleys that shall be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it it. The power of God is in him. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. You guys gonna get ready for the song. I hope you guys are gonna sing the song to make my nerve starting jumping and shouting, make my mind running out of place. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. See the devil want to take this this man out because he knew he knew. <laughs> He make up his mind. See, when uh, this is the revelation, when you go through something in life and you start to make up your mind to let go, First lady, I know the devil was after her all these things before they come into Arizona to marry a man of God. You know how they get here? Do you know why they're still here? They make up their mind. I love my mama. I love my daddy. I love my kids. But I make up my mind to stand next to my husband. Oh, somebody say amen. And we're going to feel this. Because somewhere they make up their mind. This is it. They're going to do everything. This is it. Then we make up our mind to exercise the power of God is inside us. When I face God, it's going to open up Wednesday night. I was in God's house. I don't want no empty book when I face God. I want every service, every prayer, everything I do for God is in the book. 
because I make up my mind. The challenge the church today, they love God, they praise God, they worship God, they please people, but they're not make up their mind. What God tell them, somebody say amen. There is a power of the church. Somebody say amen. Let's exercise that every time we come to the church. You know why I'm challenging you? Our pastor's not preach this past message yet. And you know why? Because you not stand with him and make up your mind. The message is going to preach. It's going to be his past message when he preach. Come on, young people. When I was young, I cannot wait for my bishop to get behind the pulpit so I can back him up, so I can shout, preach it to me, pastor. Get me delivered. Get me some Holy Ghost I need it. Get me some power I need it. Oh, come on, pastor. Preach it to me. I need it. When you go to your concert, you see those people they're singing your lung and then you go, God, you shout your lung and you go home, your voice out. It's called the power of God. What devil is already defeated? What spirit is already rebuked? Oh, somebody say amen. I need to be in the house of God to have the move of God. I need it.